<laughs> Thank <Thanks> you. <laughs> um, before we start, we're going to show the show reel, just so you can see what we do, and then we're going to go through everything. Have a look. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> it's the first time I've heard it that loud. It's really weird. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen it on a big screen as well, so that was kind of yeah, cool. It's so <laughs> daunting. Uh, right, what we wanted to do, when Anthony asked us to do a talk, we wanted to do something that was actually going to be beneficial rather than just talk about what we've done and by two people you've probably never heard of and even watched the films. So, uh, what we wanted to do is explain how we got into it, um, how to approach companies, and not only that, but also how to stay working for these companies, because as you know, every single year there are millions and millions of new people who can learn this stuff, but there aren't many who last very long, and there's a lot of reasons why. So we want to try and give you a heads up as to what to expect. Uh, first off, my, my background is I used to be a 2D um, animator, and I fell into 3D working for advertising, and then I decided I didn't like what I was doing, I wasn't happy with the job, I was miserable, and then my brother said, well, why don't you write off to asylum? They seem to have a lot of fun doing weird stuff. So I said, right. So I wrote to them, and I got hired simply because the people who I wrote to um, knew my work online. So if you've got showreels, if you've got stuff, get it on YouTube and seriously make a name for yourself. That's how I fell into it. So hopefully that'll be helpful. <laughs> um, right, yeah, just to cover one thing, that's Steve, I'm Paul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I basically fell into it by accident. Um, I was working at NPower at the time, and I knew Steve, and uh, he threw a little couple of bits of work my way, and then I got asked by Asylum to build a model, um, and I did, and then after that, Steve, they wanted Steve to do more shots, and he said, well, I just can't, I need someone else to work with me, and he said, would you know anybody? And he said, yeah, do you want a job? <laughs> And I said, yeah, all right then. And then I left Empower that week and started on my first full-time Asylum film. And that was, what, six years ago? So, yeah, I've, I just fell into it. So, 
Yeah, it's, but it's, it's not <laughs> as, to be honest, it's not as hard to get into as you'd think. If you think it's working on movies, it's going to be, oh my God, they're going to be wanting every kind of thing you can expire, you know, expect. But a lot of the time, it's literally the work you do. So if you've got, if you've got a brilliant eye, they can see that and they'll hire you. Um, so just give it a shot. Don't, don't be put off by seeing the Avengers or whatever big films. You go, I can't do that. I'm not there yet, so don't bother. Because I wasn't there yet, and I'm still, <laughs> I'm, I'm still not. But I work, so you know, you can. <laughs> um, just a heads up uh, is basically, it's, it looks all glamorous. What are you laughing at? Nothing. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> just a heads up was actually titled because we wanted to um, give you the kind of heads up that we honestly wish we'd had before we went into this. Because when I wrote off and I got the yes, you can come work for us, it was really, really exciting. But no one ever told me it was actually going to be quite tough because you don't actually get the kind of deadlines you hope you would. Like your, your best work, for example, you may not ever get the time to do that kind of stuff. Uh, we have to... Uh, get something like 150 shots done in about five weeks, six weeks sometimes. So you won't have, you know, days and days and days to work on one shot to make it perfect, as you can see. But the, uh, <laughs> so yeah, hopefully, you know, just, just be aware that it is great working in it and it's amazing fun and you work with some amazing people. No. And, <laughs> but you basically have to meet the best kind of people, but it is very tough work and it's not as easy as you think. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, we're not trying to put you off. It no, is no, 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 so, so much this fun. Do I mean, it, it's brilliant. How, how many gigs do you get that you can animate a three headed shark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, feel, I almost feel like I should brag about <laughs> that. So. Yeah, well, we've we done five <laughs> as well, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, it, 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 it. You do spend, w once you get a, a new project, you do spend quite a lot of time giggling at each other and just, I, I can't believe we're actually getting paid to do this. Uh, but yeah, the flip side is it is very hard work. But once you see something on screen, it's incredibly re rewarding. It's like um, you see films on, like if you're just flicking over on a Saturday night sci fi channel, you say, Holy crap, that's one of my films. And it's like, like there's, there's people watching this. And, and it gets. Usually about just, 10 people. And you <laughs> do. But there's don't, people don't, can you cut that out just in case they're watching? <laughs> there's people watching it. <laughs> and well, once you see This is that, the biggest like, audience we've ever had watching <laughs> the It's really weird. So yeah, seeing it on screen and saying I had a part in making that, it's only there because I did something to it. And, and it's such a big ego boost, if nothing else. And and it makes you really proud, even if you're not proud of the actual film itself. Just that something that you have done is on screen it's the biggest payoff you could hope for mm. so it is worth it um software generally we use <laughs> lightwave um for everything everything on there is is lightwave and after effects uh every so often we'll use real flow if we can actually get it the settings to work in a kind of very very <laughs> timely fashion because if anyone's ever used real flow <laughs> but just making something this big can take like days to simulate yeah. well that, like that haircut is because of real flow and render times it's true, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, i'd usually be offended if it's actually true i told you that um but yeah a real flow is amazing if you can work it out and get the settings and just condense the area you're going to be working to and get the shots down to like 40 frames or something but so that's, that's another one we use, and PF track, which yeah, uh, we do like. quite a lot of tracking, and because <laughs> because the studios that we work for are very low budget, the cameras aren't very good, and their crews aren't very experienced, so the quality of plates that you get given are quite bad. Um, but because it's low budget, they don't have an option for reshoots, so you have to make do and do what you can. So. I, sometimes, if, I, if I'm tracking a shot, I can go through Synthize, Bouju, PF Track. Uh, I've started using 3D Equalizer recently. Um, just because they all use different tracking algorithms, one might work where the others won't. So it, it, it can be annoying, but it, it's still fun. <laughs> um, we've put working remotely because we're actually based in the UK. Um, but we work for companies in America, um, in Burbank and uh, New York and, and other areas. 
But um, the reason why we're able to do that is because we take on the full shots. If you want to be a specialist, a lot of the time, like if you just want to focus on modeling or whatever, they might call on you, but it means you'll only get paid for that one model, which sounds obvious. But a lot of the time, you will have to use the software they're using in order to mix with their teams, because uh, they want you to be part of what they're doing. Because me and Paul actually take on the full film a lot of the time, they know that it doesn't matter soft what software we use. So if you prefer Lightwave, use Lightwave. If you prefer Studio Max, Maya, it doesn't matter. As long as you can take on the full shot, a lot of the time they will just say, as long as you send us a final video, we don't really care. So don't be put off if you've spent all your time learning, say, Lightwave, but you think it's all done in Maya. It doesn't matter. So. <coughs> yeah, um, yeah, being a specialist and all around, I'm actually going to steal Glenn's speech on this one. Yeah, <laughs> he's not here. Um, okay. Yeah, a friend of ours that we work with at Asylum, uh, Glenn uh, Campbell, he, he did a talk uh, about six, six eight months ago, and he, he actually made a really good comparison about big studio jobs and freelan or small studio freelancer jobs. In a, big, in a big studio job like ILM or... MPC. MPC or Weta. Like Weta, places like that. Other people we they cry about. They look for specialists. So if you, and if you're a modeler, all you will do every day, all day, is modeling. You'll finish one model, hand it off to the texture artist, you'll get another one in. And it, 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 what Glenn said was it's literally just um, a production line. That's all you're doing, just cranking out models, after model, after model, after model. Now, if you've got the, the mindset to do that, then that's fine. But, I mean, a lot of creative people aren't very good at sticking with one thing, they will get bored very quickly and the quality of the work will go down. Um, freelancing and smaller studios look for all-rounders, like generalists, who can take a shot from start to finish. And if you're going to go the freelancer route, and especially working on B-movies, that's what they were looking for, because they want to be able to pay the least amount of people for the most amount of work. So if you're a generalist, you can take, you know, like Steve and I, we do films, <coughs> the entire film, just the two of us, because we're both generalists. Steve more than I do, because I can't animate at all. Um, <coughs> so we can take shots. So w when we get a project, we'll look at the shots and we'll divvy up the shots between us, and we'll take those shots from start to finish, um, pretty much all the time. Now. If it was a, a bigger studio where everybody was a specialist, some of the jobs, the model wouldn't get any work at all. Texture artists wouldn't get any work at all. And then you'd have people sitting idle waiting for that um, previous link in the chain. So yeah, it, it, it all does depend on your what kind of brain you've got, how your brain works, and what kind of work you want to go into. If you want to do freelance B-movie stuff, generalist, be a generalist, just get good at every aspect. Um, that's yeah. basically it for that one. Well, team size also comes into that. If you, um, for example, really enjoy a lot of things, but not everything, um, you can meet someone like him who does the stuff I hate, so that works out. So <laughs> if you are going to form a team, a lot of the time it's best to keep your team down because as the guy earlier on covered, a lot of these projects are low budget um, and you don't want to be splitting, say, um, so to use your example, so, uh, 20K between, say, 20 people. Because if you're doing three months work then or five weeks work, six weeks, whatever, it can really come down. So if you're lucky enough, you can actually try and form a team that's very small but meet people that can do the stuff you can't and enjoy it, obviously. Yeah. Um, because we're lucky, because I uh, say everything I can't do, or everything I'm, I'm not liking on he can do, and vice versa. So it works. But every so often, we will call in someone else if they can do something we can't between us. But the best tip I can give you is if you're going to set up something to do films, and you want to be you know, working on the visual effects, try and hook up with someone else who will take off a lot of the things with you, but not too many people. Because that, that can be a real killer if you work on, on low-budget movies. Um, speed, balance, speed, ability. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of time it's compromise, basically. The client knows damn well you're not working for idiots. They know that in five weeks' time they're not going to get an ILM standard movie. They, they know that, and you've watched mm. TV movies, and they're not going to get that. They're not stupid. So 
a lot of the time, as good as you are, there's, there's people in this room who are better than, than we are at doing things, but the actual idea, <laughs> I can look at that. <laughs> I'm like, I can actually see a few, it's really <laughs> But you can actually um, have um, the best ability, but if it takes you four days to do one shot, it's not going to work because it's, it's going to throw a spanner into work when you get, say, 150 shots to get done in five weeks' time. So best thing to do is talk to the client and say, look, we, we really want to deliver this, and we can deliver that, but we either need more time, and sometimes they'll say, okay, well, we can try and find you an extra couple of weeks or whatever, or you will have to bring down your quality a bit, but as I say, the client is usually understanding, and they understand all that. So don't, don't put pressure on yourself watching it something and think, well, I'm amazing, but my work isn't getting out there. It can, it can be incredibly frustrating, but just bear with it. So yeah. It's really rewarding, and the people you're working for know all this. You're yeah. not, you know. I mean, the one bit of um, expanding on that, if you can just be, like given the time constraints and everything like that, if you can be just a little bit noticeably better than what they've had previously, that goes a long way. If you can like, get a client to say, wow, that, that, that's better than we've seen in one of these films before, then you've basically got a gig for a while because they will come back to you if, if you can deliver those results for that money in that amount of time. So I mean, don't kill yourself trying to get ILM level. I mean, don't stop striving for that, obviously, but it's, it, it is, it's a matter of balancing. Uh, it's a big balancing act of how much time can I spend on this shot to make it look as good as I possibly humanly can. It's just, just a little bit better than what they've got before because then that gives you a little bit of headroom to be better on the next film and then the next film and then the next film. I mean, you know, don't go all out killing yourself on the first film because they will expect it every time and you'll just well, you end up six foot under to be honest so. <coughs> um, we've put attitude because um, you can have the best ability in the entire world I've met people who are absolutely incredible they're amazing and if I put together my own team I wouldn't hire them if you paid me because they were just awful to work with the thing you've got to bear in mind with film uh, film work is that the people, especially in TV movies, they've worked on a long schedule of trying to get the script right. They've, got, they've only got a couple of months to get the whole film done. And by the time it gets to you, these people are just sick to death of this film. They really want It's been a nightmare since day one. The reshooting didn't work. The casting was terrible, but they had to reshoot loads of things because of it. The locations were shut down, everything. By the time they get to you, they just want you to just get on with it. They don't want aggravation. They don't want you to be annoying. They don't want you to be, well, if it weren't for me, you wouldn't even have a shark, so I'm going to start negotiating the money again. Just, you know, you'll, you'll discuss the money terms in the first place. And as, as the guy earlier on said, they'll come to you with a budget sometimes, and you say if you can do it for that or not. But don't, don't let your attitude or ego ruin a good thing. Because seriously, even if you're the best ass in the world, they won't call you back. We know so many people who are... I see on Facebook now looking for work, and I know the problem is, I don't want to write it because that's a bit mean, but <laughs> I know why they're not getting work, and it's because no one wants to work with them. But they're brilliant. I can honestly say that there's three I can think of who are amazing, but I wouldn't hire them because they're annoying to work with, and people who are working at the end of these shoots, that's the last thing they need. So a lot of the time you're going to have to just go along with what they say. If they, if they want a really tough schedule, if they're changing their mind about something or whatever, if you want steady work, you have to a lot of the time just go along with it and say, Okay, and then hang up and then swear at the wall or whatever you want to do, but no, just don't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so just keep your attitude in check. Don't go in with an ego with any of this, because these people are sick to death by this point. So that's very, very, very important. Do you want to go with that to Um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one sort of ties into the previous one. Um, on B-movies... <laughs> they have they have like what less than two weeks to shoot the film. It's usually ten to twelve days. Sometimes, yeah. And some things can happen. <laughs> we had um, we had a project couple, about three years ago now. Um, shall we? I don't know what film you on about, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, and well, basically, they, they, it was all it was all filmed on location, and there was a massive storm, and okay. the location got shut down. Now <laughs> they'd filmed most of it, but they couldn't finish and it was about three, four weeks behind schedule. And when the island reopened, they still couldn't shoot, so they had to go somewhere else, and they couldn't get the original cast back. 
So, in the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you've never watched this film. We've well, definitely not sat through it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is one, one of the first films that we did by ourselves. Hmm. So, yeah, there was two of us on it. This is what did this. <laughs> Um, and so the entire, uh, cause, because we'd got this, it was one of the rare occasions that we got sent a script beforehand, and the script was actually really good. We it were was. really, I really, really looking the forward. I was getting yeah, the opening itself was excellent. Yeah. But the, the, the really was it. Like, oh, this is really cool, and it's just the two of us, so we can essentially make it look the way we want, and not have to worry about. <laughs> this sounds really egotistical and big-headed, but we didn't have to worry about other people dragging the quality down. <laughs> he said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I work with all day long. I'm so good. I'm so good. <laughs> but right. so um, ah, this has gone yeah, the entire weird. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So much happened. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Who Come said on. that? Come the <laughs> When's <laughs> your speech? I will heckle you. <laughs> I will heckle so the yeah, life in, out in of the you. space of yeah, in the space of essentially <laughs> yeah, of all the topics to be on. <laughs> in the space of two months, we have, be quiet. <laughs> I can't honestly fix this. This is really weird. So <laughs> oh, it's just mind. it's gone off. It's like really weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, in the space of two months, the entire film changed. Um, it was completely different from the original script, it's and then off. we had to wait for the edit. And they, they, uh, I don't know what, what the, the person's name was, so I can't do that. Um, but they got a, a new editor who wasn't very experienced, straight out of like, college or university. And she took uh, two weeks to do the first 30 seconds of the film. So, yeah, basically she was out. <laughs> and then a week later we got an edit and it was like, what the hell's this? Because <laughs> we didn't know about all these problems at the time. I was like, what? This isn't nothing like... Okay. <laughs> and at that point, we had a very, very short time yeah. to work on. It I affected how much time we had, and also everything we'd actually done test scenes for and everything we'd actually researched into doing didn't actually get used yeah. anyway, and it was all a waste of time. And then we had to basically start from scratch because they didn't film any of it. Yeah, I mean, luckily, really luckily we had the short models. I mean, there were, what... But Seven that becomes our problem room. then. They then say, yeah, well, yes. that's what it is, make it. So, so we then have to be It's one of those things you have to be aware. With low budget stuff, if something doesn't work, they can't reshoot. Um, or it can change drastically from what you were pitched. So it's very important to be able to. I mean, it, it does knock you on your ass, not going to lie. It's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> so you start off a project on a negative note, but it's just, it's important to. It's, it's really cliche, but basically just pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and get on with it. Just do, just look at what's in front of you and d deal with it and say, right, okay, so that stuff's not going to happen. So that test footage is irrelevant, so ignore all that. And then, right, this is what's going on in here. This is what's going on here. And just take it step by step. Because it's a completely new film, everything that you had in your mind isn't going to work anymore. So you... you you have to really force that out, and then and, and it's it's literally just sitting down and going on with it. Even if, because of all the changes, you're not enjoying and uh, enjoying the film, or working on the film as much as you would if it was exactly what it was pitched as. You're still going to get that payoff at the end by saying, oh, like there was all these issues, but we did it. We got the deadline. They're happy with everything we give them. It's going to be on TV. So even if it's not what you hoped it would be, it's still something with your name on that tens of people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> None of you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, right, with this one, different types of clients. <laughs> yeah, we've got so many horror stories. <laughs> we, we haven't got time for this. Um, we should skip all this. Yeah, anybody got a hotel? <laughs> diff different types of clients are basically, we've worked for about five, six different studios now, and every single one approaches uh, projects differently. Um, I can honestly say that Asylum were the best organized <coughs> client we've ever come across. Everything we were doing, they knew inside out. They knew we needed the plates, we needed the edit, we needed all the stuff. They even let us know the deadline and when the sound checks were, everything, so it was very, very good. We were kind of spoiled, because that was our first client, so it really 
We expected everyone to be like that, especially companies that claim to have been around a lot longer and asylum are rubbish. So, mm. um, <laughs> but we, we then work for another company. Um, so we're not going to mention names now, but asylum is okay because it says we work for asylum. Um, but yeah, so we work for these other companies and they were late with everything. And they, we had to explain stuff to them. We've had clients that go to the cinema and watch Prometheus, and they go, yeah, do that. It's like, <laughs> okay, but <laughs> Prometheus was done by like a lot of people working in like a lot of months. So there's two of us, and you, your contract said you had 150 shots. It's now 700. So no, you're not going to get Prometheus. You know, no, no chance. Um, so a lot of the time, what I'm trying to say is basically every time you meet a client, you have to with the adapt thing, um, you have to adapt that they are going to be, you're going to have to explain a lot of things to them, especially if they're very new to doing visual effects films. The client I was saying about before, he literally, they would always done dramas, they'd always done TV things, and now he's venturing into doing sci-fi and things like that. So we had to explain how our process works in order to get the best results. Um, so a lot of time you will have to be nice, but explain to them it's not going to work, a lot of the things that you're asking for. They can either say, okay, we'll scrap the project anyway. They can either revise the budget or they can say, okay, we understand, how about this? And as long as you go to them with it, they'll listen. So I say, just a lot of time it is about just being honest, just explain to them and, you know, um, manage expectations in self and client. Basically, like I just covered, it's with yourself, you have to be aware that you're not going to get your best results all the time. There's nothing, I can honestly say, and this isn't me being, like, putting myself down, there's nothing on that showreel that looks the way I wanted it to. But that is because time frames, and it's easy to blame, um, time frames, um, problems with the client changing their mind at the last second, all those kind of things. Um, so a lot of the time, you have to manage your own expectations, but you also have to be very honest with clients and say, I know you wanted a 9,000 frame shot of this, but you want it by tomorrow, so it's not going to work. So just to say, just to be honest. <laughs> and they do do that. <laughs> uh, problem solving. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. The, the problem solving aspect of things is actually our favorite part of the job because we, we, we have clients that come to us and say, right, we need to do this. And I know a lot of a lot of freelancers or studios. Um, they would say, "Well, for the money and the time, you've got no chance in hell." We we're actually a bit proud of ourselves that we haven't we haven't had anything thrown at us that we haven't been able to figure out in one way or the other. Whether it, whether it's actually okay, uh, well, if we do this, this, and this, and this, we can do it like they want it but the render time is going to be ridiculous, so I have to think of another way to do it, and then maybe explain to the client that, okay, it's not like possible in the exact way that you want, but this is an alternative. Um, that It's sort of what you want. It's like halfway there. Um, and more often than not, <laughs> the clients can be overambitious with what they want, and more often than not, they will come back and say, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Because I think it's a case of they, they want to basically get as much out of you as they can for the money and the time. But if you start explaining that, like, yeah, the, the time, it's just not going to work, or um, <coughs> or things like that, then they usually come back and say, okay, yeah, as long as you present an alternative, generally speaking, they're fine with it, even if you do get the pickiest client on the planet. Um, but one of the big ones that we had was for a movie called Zombies, Which we've actually got the video of <laughs> to show just how much we had to do in a very, very short time. Mm -hmm. But it was one of the biggest challenges we had. But we're, it sounds weird, but we're actually pr more proud of this video than anything else just because we know the circumstance in which we had it. And we were even able to push it to solve a problem that they had that they didn't expect us to be able to do. Yeah, we actually got told afterwards um, uh, by the director of the film, uh, he said, I'm astonished that you pulled that off because I didn't think it was doable. The, the basic story was was that they filmed this film and they had, it's all, it's all about a zoo that gets some weird thing and all the animals go nuts and they escape. But they filmed a gorilla that mm -hmm. it shows up quite a few times in the film. And 
it wasn't a visual effects shot. So when we watched the edit, you had, not kidding, a guy in a really seriously rubber suit yeah, really just running bad, around. A really and bad rubber suit. Uh, bearing, in mind, <laughs> it, bearing in mind, it's around the time that, you know, Planet of the Apes came out. So, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty horrible to say, coming up next is Zoompies or whatever. <laughs> and it came on, and we had already done the monkey, the, the monkey kind of shots, which we we're going to get on to. Um, and we said, we actually got these done a bit ahead of schedule because, you know, we found a way of doing it. Do you mind if we have a go at doing this gorilla? Because we're just fascinated to see if we can pull it off. Because he's stupid and he just looked really... He, yeah. he looked ridiculous. I, I wish on our show where we kept the original one. There's a shot yeah. that we're going to show in a minute of the, a, a girl in front of, um, like, a cage. And she's mimicking drinking and he, the gorilla's copying her. Well, the guy was just going, oh, God, oh, God. And he's got a really rubber face hanging down. You can see his eye underneath. And it's just the most stupid thing yeah, I've ever looked, seen. The, 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 the rubber suit actually looked like an orangutan trying to impersonate a gorilla. That, I, that, didn't even that had gorilla melted. Face. It's <laughs> it looked hilarious. Really weird. But it's, the, the problem was, was that these shots literally followed our monkey shots in the film. So <laughs> we then thought, well, people are going to turn off now and they're not going to get to the bit we did later on. We were quite happy with <laughs> just because of that. So, yeah, so we've included the video, but we, we might not play it all because it goes on for about two minutes. But, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to that and you can see what we mean. Okay. Uh, do you want to unmute it, please? <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. Unmute yeah. it. Oh, just, just just oh, yeah. Can you mute it? Have you muted it? I'll unmute it. Do we want to hear the music? No. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Right. Um, He's bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> right, the next one I'm going to say is um, Favours, yeah. which sounds really dodgy. Not it's that not kind. the way it's meant. <laughs> um, <You lost>. yeah. <laughs> Um, but basically, uh, the best story that we've got, and it's someone I'll tell everyone, <laughs> and I even told Gary earlier on, he's probably going to heckle us in a minute, um, was basically, um, we worked on an asylum film, and these two directors came here who were brand new, and they were going off to set up their own company, and they put together a film that they absolutely loved, but their budget had been blown on a load of people who didn't really deliver. They were gutted, obviously, because they wanted to enter the film into this festival, and James came to me and he said, is there any chance on this planet you could do something for us, just a couple of shots, because it will really be a massive headache gone, seriously, it would be brilliant. And I said, yeah, of course we will. Well, this is your own film, and I fell out. Just, just, uh, just throw it out anyway. He didn't have any budget. He literally had exploded, blown it all. So we did, what, 15? Yeah, behind the walls. Yeah. Uh, about we did 30 shots. I did, no, I, I, didn't. I did about 10. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, there's a load of tracking ones. So. Well done. <laughs> but, I, um, but yeah, all right, there's more than 10. But there's, <laughs> there's more shots than we thought anyway. But we did it, and we just thought, we've done a nice thing, whatever, and move on. The reason why this is the best story ever is because we didn't get any money for it, really. Uh, really, really low, because uh, it came out of their own pocket, so we felt really bad. Um, and they told us that over and over again. Um, but the other thing was was that... Ever since then, that was about five years ago, most of our work has actually come from them. Because for some reason, they've got this thing that they still owe us a debt, and they've gone out of their way to, every time they hit, go to a festival and they hear someone needs visual effects, they put an, uh, our name in. And we've got about, what, nine, ten projects off them? Yeah. And they're amazing. So even though it's nice to pursue the big bucks and that kind of stuff, sometimes it's nice to do a favour because sometimes it will actually come back on you. And it's, it's a brilliant thing. I say it, we're, we couldn't actually be without them now, could we? They're no. amazing. So. <coughs> um, well, we did snake, didn't we, as a favour? Yeah, <laughs> ter terrible <laughs> film. But don't overreach. I don't know why um, we look there. It's right there. <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, one, yeah. Um, yeah, don't overreach. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> we both wrote this, believe it or not. <laughs> don't overreach was basically some of what we said earlier on, was don't over-push yourself something that you're not going to achieve in the time frame. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> it, can, it, can, it can actually cause serious injury to your health. <coughs> um, we, we were so going into this, we were so gutted about not being able to deliver our best, but we were getting like two hours sleep a night or whatever, and it was killing us. And at the end of... Like Shark Week, for example, yeah, yeah. Um, I was absolutely dead on my feet. I, I had people, I had my friends saying to me, you seriously don't look well. And I said, yeah, I know, because I had to do, they know I can do this. I had to deliver this on every single shot. And it was massively painful. 
Well, when I told our supervisor why I was so unwell, he said, well, why don't you just tell us? Because we'd have said, well, we only gave you like a couple of weeks to do it, so we knew that you weren't going to do this, so you could have just said. And that yeah, was me just being stupid. So. Yeah, at the end of the day, no job is worth your health. No. That's basically what it is. Take care of yourself. Uh, We're making yeah. it sound like a really dangerous <laughs> job. <don't laughs> we? We're Most of you probably won't be here in a couple of years. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's not that at all. <laughs> Let's yeah, I mean, it, it, it is just a thing about being sensible. Um, at the beginning of a project, get the number of shots. Before you even say anything to a client, what, like, generally you'll get an edit so you can um, keep everything in continuity. Watch the edit. They usually put a slug in for each VFX shot. Look at them. And if you think they want this in, like, they want this in, the mo in a month, you've got no chance. I'm, I'm not going to sleep for a month then say to them, look, I cannot do this number of shots in this amount of time. It's just physically not possible. Um, but in, that leads into the next one. Sounds like we refuse a lot of stuff. <laughs> You're not getting <laughs> that. No. It leads into the next one. Don't be afraid to say no. If you're in the last week of a project and you've still got shots to do and you start getting notes that are completely changing the action, which does happen, yeah. um, because somebody watches an edit and decides, oh, hang on, that sequence would be better there, and it would be better if this thing did this instead. Don't be afraid to say, well, no, that's ridiculous. I've still got like 15 shots left to do. They work in the edit. You'll be editing the movie a week from the deadline. And with Asylum and a lot of the films that we work on, they air on the sci-fi channel and they get an air date before they even get a script. Mm. So there's no way to move that deadline. Sometimes it's a bit like Gary, I think it was Gary said early on with his question, uh, that they do feel like they've got infinite number of changes. And that's when yeah. you literally have to say, look, if you want this film delivered and you have to deliver because your client will just be so angry if you don't, you have to say, no, I'm sorry, you've changed your mind about that. We've delivered exactly what you wanted. That's it. If they say, if it's our mistake and we didn't follow the instructions, it's different. Yes. That's, that's our fault, no sleep for us, that's fine. But you will get clients who say, actually, I've changed my mind. Do you mind if we add three of these things instead of just one or whatever? And you think, uh, d what? No, no, you can't <laughs> yeah. do it. And no, it, I mean, as long as you say it in like, a respectful way. Yeah, like I said, attitude is a big thing. Don't, <laughs> yeah, don't if go if in and say, look, absolutely I, I not. Would, I would love to be able to do it, but I just physically do not have the time to do it. Because I mean, you, you do need sleep. As soon as you start not sleeping, you're not going to deliver anywhere close to the best work you can in the time you've got. So, and, and that will lose you a client. If, you, if your quality drops dramatically because you are so tired, then a client's going to say, oh, I don't really want to go with them again because they're not actually that good. So, yeah, take care of yourself. That's basically it. I'm going to uh, skip the next ones because time awareness we've already covered um, and whatever it takes is basically do your best but as I say, within reason and, and yeah. just say it. Um, I say don't be lazy about it. They know that you're good but they also know that you've only got a week to do it so just, just be very aware of all that. Um, mm. Communication is basically what we just talked about. Basically just be open with them and say look, you've given us a ridiculous thing, you know it's ridiculous. Um, you can either hire more people which means more budget or you know, solve it some other way, but just just make sure everything is flowing communication-wise. Because we get a lot of clients who leave us to it, but then don't write to us again for months. And we have no idea what's going on, mm. but then they'll throw a load of changes at us. We think well, if you told us this last week, we could have done something. Now we can't. So you have to have to be very honest with them. Um, ambitious clients we've kind of covered in as much as some clients will go to the movies, come back from Avengers and say, I've decided I want to make a Marvel film like, in, in a yeah, week. I went to see San Andreas I'd love it if my, my kid in 10 days can have a Marvel film of his own. And I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, at this point, I don't care about your child. I don't, we're not getting a film like that in 10 days. Um, technical problems, rendering, simulating. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's another big time thing um, that some people do seem to forget. If you've got a water simulation that you need to do, factor the time in that it's going to take to do that into your workflow. Um, rendering times, if you've got a 300 frame shot and it takes five minutes a frame to render, which is unheard of for us, <laughs> you do have to scale back a lot of stuff. Um, then you need to factor in how long those renders are going to take. And if they're going to take more than, I don't know, four hours, 
we'll scale it back so it doesn't take, just figure some way out so it's not going to take that long. Realistically, to meet these deadlines, we have to knock out, say, about four, sometimes five shots a day. That gives you an idea of how much time we actually get to spend <laughs> on these shots. And that is because of the time frame. Um, if you want to spend four days on a water simulation and for that, then it just means that for those days you've lost, you have to seriously, seriously make up for it. And that can be quite painful. So just, just be aware of all that kind of thing and just, be, just manage it properly. That's, that's the biggest tip I, we can give you, is just make sure when you go into this, you don't bite off more than you can chew and just go straight at it and find that you've oversold it and now you can't do 150 other shots the same way. Um, I did it, to be honest, totally and utterly guilty. When we got given three-headed shark attack, which is a really weird film, um, <laughs> as you saw, I went overboard on trying to do certain shots in the film, thinking that, oh, wow, I really want to we, we really impress them. Yeah. <laughs> so we really pushed it and said, we really want to blow the client away and make sure we get more films from them. So we threw everything at it. And I found it took way too long to do one sequence yeah, in the and, film. And, and then I hate the film personally because I can see a lot of the shots in it that I had to rush, and that really bothers me. I, I'm, I don't like look at my own work anyway. But when I look at stuff, I know I, I rushed, and it's because I made a big mistake. So, yeah, just, yeah. just, just be very, very aware of all the time. With, with Three Headed Shark Attack as well, that one, that one nearly killed the both of us because it was a 350-shot movie, and we had six weeks yeah. to do it. My hair was starting to grow back, and <laughs> it, just it went. gave up. It just went. <laughs> so I don't know. But just in case there's a four-headed shark attack, we're not going yeah, back at, again. At, so the end, at the end of it, the, the supervisor says, "Right, have a week off." Yeah. <laughs> he, he basically, and, and, and to be fair, he said, "Send us the invoice, but have the week off." So we actually got a paid week off, which is which you don't get as a freelancer. It's <laughs> 25 pound, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you got how much? <laughs> Damn it, yeah, we're, on, we're on different rates. Damn it. <laughs> um, not a nine to five job we've already covered in as much as it's not just, you can't just, if you've got a deadline, say this Thursday, to get 150 shots done, you can't just clock off at five o'clock and say, wow, well, I'm going out with my friends now. Because at the end of the day, you've signed a contract to get this film done. So one way or another, your mates are going to be without you because you have to make sure this mm -hmm. film gets done. If you, like I said, all this is basically how you stay in the industry, getting steady work. We get steady work because we're reliable, not because we're great. It's because we're reliable and we get the job done on time because they know that we'll treat it as a professional thing. Um, if you start clocking off um, early because you want to go out with your friends, you are either going to seriously damage your health or you're going to miss your deadline. If you miss your deadline, your career's over because... If you try to imagine that with um, B movies, when they go to these film festivals or wherever they're going to go, or you know these like sci-fi meetings and stuff, they're going to talk. They're going to say, "How was your production? Oh, our production was great. How were the visual effects guys? They were quite good, or they were bad. Who did them?" And if they say they were terrible, they were so annoying, they missed the deadline, they're not going to call you. No one will. So just, yeah, just when you sign into this thing, just be aware that it's not a. If I miss this one, there'll be another because these people will talk, and you can seriously have one film that ruins you. I feel like mm -hmm. actors, if they mess up in real life, they do something bad, they don't get hired ever again. So mm -hmm. same thing, just be aware of all the things. We're not trying to put you off, we're just trying to give you like a heads up of things that we wish we knew. Yeah, so. it does seem like we're saying a lot of negative things. <laughs> we just don't want the, <laughs> we just don't want the competition, because <laughs> I know some of you are better than us, so <laughs> forget it. But yeah, it, it's basically what I said at the beginning. Um, yeah, it is hard work, there are a lot of negatives, but the payoff is so worth it. It, it really is. I mean, you can you can go through like a month, two months of absolute hell and sleepless nights, but at the end of it, you're done. And it's like, uh, my name's on a movie. It's, I, yeah, that, it's, it's just it's one of those things. Like, That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> at like the end of the day, the as, 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 as bad as we painted this, we probably didn't tell. Are we going to edit this brilliantly? <laughs> um, but I can honestly say I wouldn't do any other job. That's it. Yeah. I, absolutely, I love my job. I yeah. love what I do. So as bad as we're trying to make it, we're trying to give you more of a just be yeah, aware of these yeah, things. But it can be the best rewarding job ever. Because like so. with, the, with the two of us, we went in it not knowing any of this. No. And it was like a smack in the head. <laughs> it was like so we're trying, <laughs> to avoid, we're trying to avoid you getting a smack in the head. So there you go. Or losing your hair. So. Um, oh, this is your drive, isn't it? I think so. No, I don't really zoom you don't. Right, we're just going to show. I'm not sure how much time we've got left, actually. Um, but this was the Zoombies thing. I think it's only like two minutes long, anyway. Yeah. How do I press play? 
<laughs> I animate stuff. I don't press play. Is yeah, that it? Use the mouse button. Shut that. up. I don't know. No, it's not touch. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm used to my tablet, so <laughs> I'm touching the monitor. Laptop trackpad's confusing him. <laughs> See? Didn't work then either. Well, it should be. Dumbass. Right. Um, <laughs> is there a way of pressing play on this? In. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Unless you... Oh, no, it's working. There you go. We've done it. 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 I've done, I'm a genius. I've done it. <laughs> uh, we're just going to show this. Basically, it's the clip for Zoombies, and this was done in a couple of weeks that we were meant to have months, but we didn't. But this got us a lot of points, and as much as this was when we started to get our own films, because they realised we could actually professionally kind of mm. take it on with a good attitude of, we'll try and fix the problem yeah. for you. And this was the first time we'd ever done, like, touched fear. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was actually the biggest <laughs> headache, was trying to get it to work. I had to upgrade my computer because I couldn't even get the fur to show up. It was really yeah, it wouldn't annoying. render. No. But yeah, a lot of these, I say, it's not amazing Planet of the Apes stuff, but it was, we had to replace a monkey that was actually put in the film that really wasn't behaving. It wasn't doing anything yeah, that was meant to be doing. That's just a, a face track on the monkey. Yeah, the, the monkey was basically making all these <coughs> weird faces and they said it didn't look scary, so we had to put in something that reacted to what was going on outside. So we then had to digitally take out the face and put something new on. And then other shots, we had to create the entire thing, including some really weird acting where the guy jumped mm -hmm. too early. So we had to fix that as well by bringing the plate forward or back. Um, Come up in a minute is the gor this gorilla shot was literally a guy in a suit, and we had to literally replace every single bit of it. So all of that is fake except the little girl. And as I say, it's not amazing, but <laughs> if you saw the other thing, you'd it say, "Wow, you that's amazing." <laughs> Yeah, and you do learn a lot of tricks to hide that your character avatars are crap. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes the, the, the client will say they're going to give you loads of um, reference photos and things, and they end up forgetting that part, which we actually really desperately need. So a lot of time we have to go through the edit and try and find a decent frame of this actor. Um, but again, we have to get the shot done in like two hours' time. So it is what it is, a lot of fun. So that was that one. Anyway, that was just, that, that's basically the best example we can give you for a massive problem-solving thing. That one was a massive headache from start yeah, to finish, we, we but have, it's uh, our most rewarding video. I think, yeah, we it? use a, a, a yeah, you've probably heard of it, but we use a renderer called Octane, and because it's GPU-based, we had to actually limit the number of strands in the fear because they wouldn't load into the graphics card's memory, and it just crapped out. He was going, no, nope, not doing it. But we do so love Octane now. As the guy said earlier, to quote a guy earlier, Octane's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, mm. Be varied as possible was basically, um, if you stick to doing one type of animation, if you're good at animating cars, then that's one thing. But if you um, vary what you can do and really study all kinds of motion, I, I went through a thing of studying all kinds of different animals. I went through a different um, cars and waiting, all that kind of stuff, and uh, animating a plane to a shark, it didn't matter. Um, you're going to be brought in on far more projects. It's, it's common sense, a lot of it. But basically, they will think, wow, you can do anything. So as soon as you get out of any kind of script, they'll throw it at you. If they only see you as you, you only do cars, you'll probably get one project for a year, <coughs> which can be really, really damaging. So best advice with that is just basically learn. If you're animating or if you're compositing, whatever, just learn every type of effect you can because you will be included on far more projects or even brought into other teams because they know you're a generalist in every area. Um, but so that's part of it. And the next one? Um, yeah, sure. In any, if you are aiming to be a generalist, be very aware of where you're weakest. Um, and if, if you've got one weak point, try and get that up to the same level as everything else. You, you want everything to be like roughly the same level so you can build up that skill at the same time. If you start getting stronger in one area above the others, then you start getting into the specialist area. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Just try and keep it balanced. That's something I need to do because I'm quite bad at lighting. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> um, <laughs> always push yourself is common sense. I say the best results you do, the more they're going to they're going to call on you. But obviously, like I said, with all the restrictions for that, just if you can do better than they expect, we get a lot of time where they're expecting to say, "Oh, we're only going to give you a week." But if we deliver better than they expect, 
they think, wow, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely call on those guys again, because imagine if we gave them next project two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. So it's brilliant, and they're brilliant. So don't start getting lazy. We know a lot of people who get very mm -hmm. lazy, very complacent, and again, they're people I wouldn't hire on my own projects if you paid me, yeah. or if they work for free. So you never, if, if, you, if you find yourself at a plateau and just not getting any better, then give yourself a good kick up the arse. Mm. Never stop striving to be better. I mean, like, like we said, yeah, you may never get to show your full uh, ability on this kind of movie, but it shouldn't stop you from trying. Uh, you deliver the best thing you possibly can, and people will come back to you. Don't overthink uh, what I put in, <laughs> because sometimes if you, if you, if you give um, a, um, a shot to someone and you say, basically, I want this, sometimes they will think of the massive picture all at once. and go, oh my God, I wouldn't even know where to start. Um, I used to do that, and I, I, do. I, I do it. He does it. He did it the other day. <laughs> um, but the yeah, th But what I started to do, and what I've actually taught other people, is how to break down a shot and make it very, very simple. Um, there's a shot in a film we work on at the moment, where basically the actress kicks upwards, and the shark just misses her, and it skims along, and the water had to splash everywhere, and the the, the dock had to move, the shadows were all weird, and it was all very strange. But when I looked at it, I thought it was going to be a massive headache. But when you break it down into just animate the shark first, don't think about the water, don't think about anything else, just work it through in very, very simple steps, you'll probably find that most shots get done very quickly because you were overthinking it. You literally made yourself stress about something that when you actually broke it down into tiny, tiny little pieces, every shot on there, I say, was done in a couple of days. And it's because it was broken down into tiny, simple steps, and they get done really, really quickly. They're not as complex as some of them might look. Um, so yeah, that's, that's another thing I, I definitely write down. Um, no when to end the conversation <laughs> is, is a little thing we want to end on, but basically, <laughs> when you, if you work in visual effects on films, okay, if you say to someone, they say, oh, what do you do for a living? You say, I work in films on visual effects. They will usually say, oh, that's really interesting. Walk away. Don't let them say what they're going to say next. You want to say, really, anything would have thin? And then you, they go, no, <laughs> not a chance. And if you did, I'd judge you. So, so, no, so some of the films are good, to be honest. We really enjoyed them. But yeah, some of them are, because I see them as not what we can really do, I, I, get very, I put them down a little bit. But I'm, I'm very unfair to our clients because it's, it's my fault, in a way. But yeah, I always, I always end it on the, yes, I work in visual effects. And then just leave. Because as soon as they, they go, really, have I seen anything? And you say no. They go, oh, oh bless. <laughs> yeah, Come here. And yeah, they give you a cuddle, and it's really pitiful. I think there is only one film that we can mention that people might have heard of. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if you have, so, OK. <laughs> That's fine. We did a uh, film, Sharknado. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that. But we worked yeah, on we a few worked of them. On that. Oh, and I can hear groans more than <laughs> I can. There's no cheering going on. It's weird. But yeah, we worked on that. But to yeah, be honest, only we, only I only worked the only on. two people in the UK who did. Yeah, <laughs> to, to, to be honest, I only worked on about um, five or six shots for each one. So each film that came out, I wasn't like a big hand on that. That yeah. wasn't all me and Paul. Yeah, we didn't do. We well, Sharknado 3, especially because we were doing um, 3D Shark yeah. Attack at the same time. But we wanted at least one shot so we could have a name on it. Yeah, just to say we did it. So <laughs> because we'd got a name on the first and second one, we thought, oh, it'd be a shame if we can't get a name on all of them. Mm. So we have so far. We've, I'm still debating whether to ask if I can have something on six. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was it, I think, basically. Yeah. We did have another video at the end, which is a four-minute video, but I think we've actually run out of time. Uh, it was basically another show reel, but showing all our breakdowns yeah, of how we do the shots. But shots. I think you saw that with Zoom Beads anyway. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any questions? questions? <laughs> Be nice. Uh, <laughs> yes? Um, so how much actually goes through the film? So you go to Sometimes. Um, sometimes mm. they'll say, Jet, we want a big snake, and then we can go away and work with sometimes our concept artists, whoever, and, and we'll say, he hasn't given us any kind of description. So Go for it, and we'll try and blow them away with something really cool. Sometimes they will come to you with a sketch and say, we want yeah. this, and then we go, oh, really? Yeah, That's a lot, a lot we, want, we want to do something else. Yeah. But a lot of the time, the client won't actually know what they want. Ma'am. Until they see a picture done by somebody else, they'll say, uh, okay. It'll give them like a jumping-off point 
yeah. of where to come back to to say, okay, yeah, I actually like that, but can you give it horns and put red stripes down it? Yeah, the, snake, it, the snake in the show real earlier uh, that comes around, uh, they were very specific what they wanted. Yeah. Um, the guy had actually drawn loads of pictures, and even in the script it said black snake with red stripe and um, fangs that were this, this long, and it had to be very specific. Um, with the... Um, three-headed shark, they gave us a sketch of what they wanted, and they also worked with the guy before, so it had a lot of that. When we work on the new one, which just comes out soon, which is a um, mm -hmm. couple of weeks, um, we got f creative freedom to try and up update it and try and make it look a bit more real, as realistic as a six-headed shark can possibly be. <laughs> um, yeah, so you heard, folks, we're working on six-headed shark. It's not shark shallow attack. stuff, but it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes we do get creative freedom, and they're the shots I love, because it means we can yeah. just, just go for it and do and try and blow them away with something they weren't expecting. But sometimes you do get clients that are very, very specific with a description this long <laughs> on exactly what they want, and it's very frustrating. Yeah, a description <laughs> this long and 30 frames to do it in. Yeah, <laughs> we, we do get out over ambitious clients that say we want the guy jumping over here and somersault and everything like that. You think it's 20 frames long. <laughs> he couldn't get up in the air in that time. But yeah, so sometimes the creative freedom shots up to me are the best ones. I love those. So. Any other questions? Oh. That's all right. No. We don't, we don't um, to be honest. By the time it gets made or even comes to us, it's already gone through all that process. So yeah. for us personally, <laughs> we, we can hear all this, or oh, that film should never be made, or it might not get made. But for us, we, we wouldn't even hear about the film until it's literally put in front of us. So yeah, yeah we, 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 have, we kind of are out of all that. Yeah, I think it's because we work remotely. Asylum well. actually love all that stuff because it's free advertising. It gets people talking <laughs> about it, so yeah. So we had it with... Um, well, it, it had to get it na its name changed to American Warship, but originally it was American Battleship, and it was co it was a, a mock buster of Battleship, and that was my first full time job. Yeah. Um, so all that was the, all that happened at, uh, before we had even seen the film. So somebody had seen it on IMDb or something, and said, "Yeah, people are going to get confused." They're not. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're really <laughs> I've never I alone did that this. I, I've <laughs> never understood that argument. Oh, it'll confuse the audience. <laughs> your, your audience aren't that stupid. I'd love to fool you all by putting <laughs> Battleship on our show. Will. That would be so amazing. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, yeah, and there was another one that they did, which was Pacific Rim. The real film came out, and then yeah, signed yeah, it Atlantic, Atlantic Rim, Rim. which had a load of headaches about it, but as I say, by the time it came to us, we couldn't care less. We yeah. just got on with it. So it we, just got, we just got to mess about with big-ass robots. It was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we throw robots today and all the legal stuff sorted. So. Any other questions? questions? Yeah. Yeah, I think we would. Yeah, we, I mean, I would. We, we worked on a <coughs> horror film um, that was deadly serious. And to be honest, it was a nice break to just try and venture out and do something that you wouldn't imagine an asylum kind of artist doing. And I really enjoyed it just from that aspect because it was brand new and it was fresh. Yeah. I, I'd take on anything, to be honest. Yeah, I, mean, we, I just we, enjoy the actual shot process. I don't care what yeah, the film we, it is. We've talked know. about um, this one. One thing that we would absolutely love to happen is to be asked to be on a TV show. That because it's, it, it is something different all the time. Or a uh, film and have months to work on it. Yeah. We, we would love to have, say, a, a very sh uh, sh slow number of shots, or a short number of shots, like, say, 50 or something, and really have, like, nine months to work on it, because then we'd actually get to show what we can really push it and really try and show what we can do. But we don't get that a lot. We get far more than we actually expected a lot of times. So mm. it's a bit frustrating. But <laughs> let's say we just enjoy. I enjoy. I don't care what film it is, even if it's a good film, terrible film, whatever. Whatever gets in front of me, I'll just enjoy creating it. So I don't care what it is. Yeah, it's essentially creating something from nothing. Yeah. And that, that's what I got. Why I got into modelling, because it is. It's literally a blank slate, and you can just make something. And once you render it, it's like that's glorious. <laughs> it, it's Any that, other it's questions? That kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of controversy about using live action in the industry. Yeah. Um, modeling and animation that you guys do specifically is in live action. Yes. Yeah. Every bit of every it. See, every 3D thing that we do is Lightwave. So you don't do anything in any of that? 
Nope. No. The, the only other things we venture out to are things like real flow, which obviously you can't do in Lightwave. But for me, um, because I came from a 2D background, um, Lightwave thinks the way I do. It's very straightforward, and everything's labeled, and everything, just get on with it. Um, I I like the way Lightwave thinks, so I've always used it. Yeah, it looks like it's designed to be used by grown-ups. <laughs> but it's a thing for me. Like <laughs> I know I'm going, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to annoy some people. Have a look at the cupboard. <laughs> I, like personally, I cannot stand Maya. You're going to be sued by Autodesk. <laughs> and uh, the interface, it looks like it was designed to be used by a ten-year-old. I mean, all the colourful icons and all that. It's like, oh god, go away. And it's. And the functionality of it is like incredibly Bye. contrived. <laughs> <coughs> it takes you ages to do actually do anything. So yeah, give me Lightwave any day. <laughs> He's like, you don't, you don't have to learn what the symbols mean. It actually says it in words. <laughs> Before the lawyers come in, any other questions? <laughs> <or>? <laughs> Seriously. Like I say, it's a personal thing. Everybody's entitled to their own personal thing. <laughs> any other questions? Who, who is a Maya user? Oh God, <laughs> he's going to attack you now. So. Yeah, Yay! <laughs> I don't have to hide. <laughs> it's being filmed. Uh, yeah, any other questions? No? No, okay. do you, you want to go home? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's now seven o'clock. <laughs>